Uh, as per the norm, uh, I have not watched the replay. Uh, I just download the replay. I don't because I, I want to give like my my gut instincts on the replay. So uh, it's this replay here: GP Brit versus French. And uh, and here we go. Let's we'll load it up. Uh, the player that we are watching is Dur Durokan, I believe. So he's the one we'll be watching. Uh, we'll be watching from his perspective. Uh, so for those of you who are new to this portion of, of SmackDown, and this is a fairly new piece of SmackDown just in general, uh, what I do is, is I watch the replay from the poster's perspective. I tend to uh, watch with their Fog of War on so that I can gain you know, the same insight into the game as to what they've seen so that I can see in the in the fog the same things that they've seen and uh, and try and uh, think through the process of the game from their point of view and, and try and figure out what they can do better so uh, Durokan is playing uh, the blue French up here in Great Plains we can see uh, that's the map uh, and his opponent uh, we'll just briefly take off the fog so we can see him is Jwall 7 uh, who is playing the uh, British Civilization. Now, in general, I would say this map is pretty good for Brits just because Great Plains tends to have high hunt. But the first thing that I immediately notice is that uh, Brit second hunts are pretty far away, so that's maybe something that can be punished. Like, this is, I guess, Brit second hunt, which is pretty far away. Uh, Durakan's second hunt's not super great either. Uh, this just kind of comes with playing on vanilla Great Plains, not the like more balanced version of Great Plains. So that's something to take into consideration is that oftentimes uh, on this more vanilla version of GP, the hunts aren't as good. Uh, but uh, we'll see whether or not uh, that gets scouted and whether or not that becomes relevant at any point. So uh, here we go. Villagers doing normal French villager stuff. A little bit of... Mm, uh, muffled movement there uh, by the villagers early on. Oh, we can see like this is lagging, like interjection mentioned. I am going to turn down the graphics a little bit. Uh, let's turn it down to like turn the stuff down a little bit. Let's turn it down to like that, I guess. Uh, take off this. There we go. That looks a little bit more normal in terms of game speed. Uh, so uh, everything looks pretty normal here. The, your villagers did bounce around a little bit. They did some uh, fumbling, which is nice to avoid. Uh, you should also be gathering your crates a little bit more optimally. Like you should have at least one of your wood crates gathered by this point, and you should have a firm decision in your mind whether you're not going to be dropping uh, a TP or not on this map. If you're going to be dropping a TP, you should immediately be sprinting towards the middle portion of the map. Uh, we can see uh, this trading post always spawns in the middle part of the map. Kind of took like a weird little swing around through here. So if you end up building a trading post with the starting 200 wood, uh, you've missed your timing that you could potentially get down uh, that trading post bright and early. Uh, so we'll see whether or not uh, you opt for that or if you just go for a market. Either way, you should like be having your villagers split already here. So uh, this is a little bit of a mistake. And ooh, like I'm not actually... Not actually sure what you're doing here. This is this uh, this all seems very very strange. Okay, so so we've got like some. It's only a minute in, but I'm going to pause it because there's like lots of little red flags here going off to me. One, the biggest thing is you haven't started to control your hunts whatsoever. You killed this first hunt and it hasn't like moved since. So we can see the bison have started wandering. Like this bison's starting to get. Uh, borderline out of control like he's really not being controlled at all and they're like starting to wander around you should at least be making an attempt to get uh, get these bison like right up next to your town center on this map you should be able to get at least three of these bison uh, right underneath your town center you can't really control where this first bison is going to be because you're going to kill it regardless uh, but you should be able to at least be hurting like the rest of these bison and be getting them dead right underneath your town center uh, the second thing that I notice is that you've opted to build a market and a house, but you don't have the resources to like do anything like with those resources. Like you haven't been chopping wood. Like the the reason you would build the market is so that you could get hunting dogs. You don't have the coin or the additional food for hunting dogs. So I'd be very surprised if you actually even end up getting hunting dogs here. And I mean, maybe you like 
trip across a really good wood treasure, but I don't think you've, like, scouted a wood treasure at all. Now, you've scouted 140 food, so that's probably where you're going right now, which is good. But that does that also means, like, you're not going to have... Uh, you're not going to have the wood required to get hunting dogs, nor are you going to have the coin required to get hunting dogs. And as a result, like, you're just, you're flat out not going to have hunting dogs early in the game. So uh, that's a bit of an issue. Uh, your scouting pattern has been good with your native scout. I like that. Uh, going to get a very good treasure here, so that's uh, kind of a win in itself. But uh, th these two things really concern me. One, that you just blindly build a market. It m makes me think, like, you don't, uh, have the the like the theoretical knowledge of why you're wanting to build a market you're just like seeing that other people build markets and so you're building a market and building a market just for the sake of having a market in itself is not very good you want to get something out of your market if you're going to use it so otherwise you're just wasting villager seconds building it and you would be better off just not even building it to begin with and uh here we go you just shot your hunts away from your town center uh the, the, like I mentioned, like these bison could be, you know, right underneath your town center right now. Uh, I made this box comparison last last week, and I really, really liked this, uh, this, and this, this, I guess concept that I came up with last week when I was watching uh, another fairly low level player. Is that like you can imagine like this ring around your town center of where you can theoretically have all your resources for the first like 10 minutes of the game. And that box it, for you could be about this size right now. And look it, you're already outside of the box and that's not a good thing. The first hunt, yeah, you can't control that. It's gonna be outside the box, no big deal. But if you consider where the rest of these trees are, your coin mines, everything like that, uh, with where you could have the hunts could potentially be in a box, maybe a little bit lower level of a player. Well, their box early game will be a little bit bigger. You know, that still gives you plenty of room to get your hunts inside that box. Still encompasses both of your coin mines, plenty of trees to uh, transition to the second age. But you don't have, you're like, you're already outside of that box with a bunch of your villagers. So uh, try and make sure that you get as much stuff inside that box as possible. And these, like, next two hunts, I mean, they're already, they're gone. Like, you should almost, at this point, like, you should give up on those and start hurting these. Or at least trying to identify where your next hunt is, which is quite far away. So, uh, this is a major mistake and it's going to cost you quite a bit uh, moving forward here. Uh, so, got the good treasures. You got another really good treasure over here. I noticed 80 food, uh, certainly going to be good. Uh, you're going to get a 13 vil age up, but don't let this like over make you overconfident just because you got those two good treasures and you feel like, hey, my age up is going to be really good because like, you know, I'm I'm doing a 13 vil age up with no idol. Like I must be doing things very good in the early game. That's simply not true just due to the fact that you got a really good treasure and you're going to get another really good treasure. So uh, this like 14 vil age up is deceptive uh, to say the very least just due to the fact that like you got some really good treasures to compensate. Uh, oh, you, you are going to hurt now, uh, which is good. Uh, at least get those guys going back in the right direction. Should be hurting this one already as well. Uh, anytime you have hunts that are fairly far away, you should be trying to herd them early and often so that you can get them back towards your base. And uh, it looks like you're going to be uh, applying some pressure here. And uh, this is good. So you've got like, you've got good knowledge of of the map, uh, barring some miracle, there's not going to be a hunt in, in this dark part of the map, nor is there ever likely to be a hunt in this part of the map. So, I mean, your, your scouting is fine of your opponent. You know where his next hunts are, and you can just apply pressure. Like, to, if you apply pressure to either one of these locations, primarily this location, because this is likely where he's going to have to uh, gather hunts from, We've mentioned many times on SmackDown how hunt-dependent Brits are, and if you can deny his gathering from this uh, very early in the game, uh, that should be a really big win for you. So uh, it looks like you're probably going to play aggressively forward here. Uh, I would have this vill over here on this left-hand side just because it's a little bit closer to denying this hunt. This hunt is going to be something you'll have to deny, but you can deny that with like either 5 Hussar or a couple Cav or something like that. So don't necessarily need to be applying pressure over on the right side of the lake. And I think you'd be better off having like your raxes and stuff over here just to be a little bit closer to this hunt and denying this hunt. But it's a little bit of a little thing going to herd here. Good. 
Um, I think I saw you getting gang saw, maybe? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, you try and get hunting dogs here. That's good. I liked that you uh, you chopped, like, a, a meaningful amount of wood. Uh, that's good. Uh, you're not chopping wood for steel traps, which makes me a little sad, but at the very least, like, you have the concept of, like, chop a meaningful amount of wood in transition, and that's all the wood you need to chop. I really do like that. I think that's good. Should still be hurting this more, like, every, like, seven seconds. That needs to be getting back as close as possible to your, uh, to your town center. If we take a look at your box, like, it's already, like, continuing to expand here in, in size, and that's never something that's good. Uh, scouting here. Okay, so like here, here, here's like you've gained knowledge that he's hurting over here. Uh, you know that that's likely where he's going to be wanting to gather his hunt from. Uh, he is sending a villager down here, so that's good on him to be hurting from two locations. Uh, but that should it should be good for you to know that he's at the very least hurting over here, and. Uh, and you should be gearing up to put your pressure over here. I'm assuming you're going to be doing pressure just because, like, it looks like that's what you're, like, it looks like you're going to do some sort of, like, either musk stable, like, forward build or something like that. Maybe musk cost, maybe double musket, I don't know. Um, or maybe this villager is just hurting. Uh, maybe you'll put a stable back in your base. I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, 700 wood. Okay. That's that's good. Looks like Samwise build probably. Yeah, it's stable and stable and uh, racks. Um, I don't know. I I would prefer to see these to be together at some point, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, you know he's he's got loads of villagers down here because you just ran past it. And you saw all of his villagers down here, so. Uh, that's going to be a good place to pressure. This is pretty awkward, though, for your buildings to be, right? Like, uh, your buildings could have either been, oh, like, right up here, and then, like, would have been an immediate threat range of threatening this herd of bison, or at the very least, they could have been, like, over here, and then it would have been easier to get to his coin mine and this hunt to the south. But this position is, like, now they're just, like, behind this lake, and there's, like, going to be extra walk time, like, getting through these woods and around this lake and stuff. Like, doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're applying pressure and you're going with a fairly low eco build, like, you don't have steel traps yet, so you've, you're doing what I would consider a fairly low eco build. And as a result of that, like, you should have like a little bit more consistency with where you're putting your buildings like they should be in a meaningful spot you just like everything you do like and, and i guess when it comes to chopping wood and placing buildings like everything there should be a reason as to why you're putting something here this stable doesn't have a reason to be here like what's the reason the stable is here like it's it's not in a protected location. If your reason was wanting to keep it defensive, then why not put it like back here behind your town center where it's like guaranteed not to go down. Like if he's got 20 pikemen training from forward Rex's right here, the stable's still gonna go down whether you like it or not, right? If it's behind your town center, probably not. Uh, so put your buildings down with reason. Uh, oh, picked up a good treasure there. Or he's in the process of picking up that treasure. Muskets being trained, 700 wood. You're doing like a slightly lower eco version uh, of, of Samwise's build, which I guess is fine. Uh, because of your treasures, once again, you're going to get out good batches of units. You're going to get out five musk and probably five us. Like you could get out batches of both, uh, which is certainly good. <laughs> going to pick up a nice XP treasure here as well. That's good. And let's see, like, okay, before these get trained, like, these these should be waypointed. Like, where's your Rax waypoint? That's what I'm looking to see. Uh, do you have a Rax waypoint? No, I don't see a waypoint. So I think these muskets are going to pop out, and they're just going to stand by the barracks, which is a mistake. Like, I should be able to see the waypoint. I think I can see the waypoint, right? Like, I should be able to see the waypoint if there was one. So I think these are just going to pop out and stand there. Um, no, they actually did move. Okay, there's the waypoint. It looks like you moved it right at the last second. So that's good. Um, I was going to be a bit concerned that they weren't going to be waypointed. Um... And you did scout all the villagers down here, so I think this is an appropriate waypoint, and your stable similarly should have, like, a waypoint. Okay, good. So they're both going down there. That's good. 
Native Scout should be in stealth and standing right on top of this hunt so you know exactly how many villagers are there. Um, uh oh, collision course. Is this just a, v yeah, that villager just gets away for free. Uh, he scouted you and he definitely saw, it looks like you saw it there just at the last second or maybe saw it late. Um, if you would have been a little bit more attentive to your mini-map, you probably would have been able to pick up that bill. Uh, spending a little bit extra time running around your muskets doesn't matter too much. Looks like your cav are going to try and get down into this position here. Uh, building a trading post, I guess that's okay. Your build doesn't have a, like, your build is a bit off now, and your eco is pretty far behind just because, like, look at where you're gathering resources from. They're so spread out. <laughs> Oh, come on, a little bit closer. Oh, it looks like those villas have vacated the uh, vacated the uh, the premises. <laughs> Anyways, you should be there. You go. Okay, I was gonna say you need to at least be going up and checking that. It's like priority number one is to stop the British player from hunting. In general, that should be priority number one is stopping the British player from hunting. <laughs> okay, everything looks pretty good here. These hussars are like okay. He's he's obviously not hunting here. Like they can move again. Like they don't need to just stand here on top of this hunt. They're far more effective when grouped up with the muskets, just in general. Okay, you've gotten vision there. You know that his outpost is there. So at this point, you've kind of like garnered the knowledge that he's given up hunting down here and let's face it like there's not a lot of food left over here anyways right so you can kind of vacate the premises that the odds of him coming back down here with a significant number of villagers is pretty low like you probably don't need to uh, continue to stand these SSR here and you're okay and then this is like maybe even a bigger deal like you're sending team cavalry hand attack and you only have four hussar uh, you'll soon have a fifth and maybe a sixth if you cancel a musket. Um, th that th that's a mistake. Like you, if you even just sent three hussar in itself, uh, that's going to be far stronger than uh, having fifteen percent extra hand attack. Uh, if you think about like five, what five hussar is plus fifteen percent, that's like an extra hussar basically so it's like six hussar versus sending three hussar just gives you like way more hussar in general so uh it's like three hussar when you only have five hussar is, is way way stronger than hussar uh, attack so this card should be either eight crossbows or three hussar if you're planning on playing really aggressively arguably you should probably be sending 700 coin or 600 wood probably 700 coin here just in general because it'll help your economy it'll help you continue with your spam regardless of what your choice is but uh, definitely should not be sending hand attack uh, with your cab. That's a huge mistake. Um, there are, I think, three options, maybe four, that you could argue that are correct. Uh, I would say 700 coin is the most correct. Uh, three hussar and eight crossbowmen are both, I guess, equally correct, depending on what you uh, have scouted and if you're going to apply pressure. And if you're just going to, like, play a TP, like, eco-based game, then you should be, like, sending 600 wood and you can, like, grab a second trading post, get stagecoach, get your market upgrades, which I'm pretty sure you still don't have at this point, and uh, continue pouring up your eco. You also haven't been training CDB consistently, which... Uh, it's a bit worrisome as well. These Hussar need to stop standing here as well. That's not good. Uh, like, they need to be grouped up with your army. The whole point in doing a build like this is applying pressure, being consistent with your applied pressure. And these Hussar, okay, great. Like, they stood down here. They checked this hunt. They know that there's not anything going on down there. Oh, there's some villas here maybe they could kill, but they're, they're not doing any good continuing to stand here. When what you really need to be doing is applying pressure in his base. You don't know what military buildings he has even. Um, these huts aren't doing you anything standing on top of this hunt, though. Uh, they, need to, they need to be somewhere else. They need to be applying pressure. And, and here's in general, like, I think the biggest flaw with what you've done so far. Like, okay, your herding hasn't been great. Your build's been a bit off. But... In theoretical sense like you need to be applying pressure with this kind of build because like he's continuing to be able to hunt here uh, he's gathering resources f kind of freely I mean it looks like he's uh, hasn't like something's gone awry in his build as well but um, 
you need to be applying pressure like consistently. Like imagine if you had all of your muskets and all of your hussars in your scout and like uh, three more hussars from a shipment or eight crossbows, something like that, instead of the hand cap, and you're standing under this outpost denying this hunt. He would not be hunting anywhere on the map, and the game would essentially be over. But instead, you're standing half of your army over here. Your muskets have been doing a lot of like just kind of dawdling back and forth here in the middle of the map. Not really accomplishing much. I mean, they did get a couple random vil kills here, which is nice, but. Uh, it would be far more effective if you were just applying pressure to the main source of his economy, which is this hunt over here, and killing that outpost. But you're not doing that, and this <laughs> continues to bother me. How, how, uh, how much you're standing, your hussar? Like, stop standing over here. He's not gathering over here. Like, we we know that. He's he's obviously gathering over here, and this is where the shift in your attention needs to be, and it's not. It's continuing to be down here to this hunt that's just not in the game anymore. Uh, got pop capped a little bit, whatever it happens to everyone. Uh, still indecision, like you're still not, your, your indecision is the biggest issue here. So if I, I'm going to tab out and look at what your, what your, uh, what you wanted me to specifically say. Um, you were wondering what the British player, uh, you played at a, played against the British as a friend. What what you can do. So what you can do to improve your gameplay. So that's that was like your your major concern. So the, the biggest thing in these first eight minutes that is your biggest issue is where you're applying your pressure. Your pressure hasn't been great. Sure you can fix your build a little bit, you can fix your herding, you can fix that stuff, but th your general like game like gameplay is oh it's okay. It's like I, I don't know, mid first lieutenant ish level. But if you want to like bring your gameplay up to the next level and like improve significantly, you need to like be thinking like the, at that captain or major level. And that's what's not occurring here. You're not thinking like, how can I deny my opponent resources? How am I like going to continue to gain advantages? You're uh, allowing him to like kind of just like freely gather over here. And it doesn't seem like you have much plan as to what's like the next step. It, once you've like created your first couple units here you're coming over here to the left hand side good you can see all the villagers he has like whoa he's got loads of villagers over here like maybe i should do something about that Wait, yet these cav are still just standing down here so oops and now when i tabbed out the sound one all crazy on me okay still these cav like how long <laughs> how long is it gonna be and uh it's worth mentioning like how big your box is at this point like your villagers are just like scattered to the wind hunting like even if you can make an, an attempt to like get behind these bison and like shoot them backwards like all it takes is like a shift click right click right click and like at least you can have them going back in the right direction it's a little thing like that it still bothers me um, <laughs> These guys have spent so much time down here. Like, you want to be active with your cap. And you're just not pressuring in the right spot. That's the biggest theme. Like, now you're over here sieging this house, like, which isn't going to do much. Okay, you know what kind of army he's got. Uh, you've seen his longbows. This this fight should be great for you. Yeah, really good positioning there with your army. Got your cav in from a good spot. Those cav that were camping out down here in the bottom finally did something. Uh, you could just fight that there. There's no reason to run. He doesn't have enough muskets really to be scary. Uh, you even have a cav upgrade, so you could be slamming into that fairly easily. Kind of let him get away for free there. Uh, should be spending your resources. Maybe you're thinking about aging here, which is, which is I guess okay, but. I mean, you're at the point where you're far enough ahead that you could just be training units and winning. Like, you, you could just deny this location and and you wouldn't have any chance. Why do you keep standing over here with all your cab? You don't, like, he's not coming over here. He's obviously got so much hunt over here. This is, you need to be applying pressure over here because the Brit player is just hunting for free over there. Uh, I'm not sure, like, you didn't say whether or not you win or lose this game. I guess, uh, I... I guess, I hope, I think you should win. Like, from this position, you should win. Uh, if you just took everything and, like, went over here to where he was hunting, you, you would definitely win. These are super late upgrades. Like, not having placer mines by 10 minutes is a mistake. You should at least gather wood for that in transition. Uh, 
uh, 700 coin. Uh, all right, looks like you're gonna try and age up, which is okay, I guess. Um, seems a little awkward. Because you've just got so many resources unspent. Like, you could e you could easily have trained another batch of Hussar there uh, and continued the pressure while still aging. Uh, also, it is worth noting that when your box gets this big and your villagers are spread out this far, that when you do age, it becomes like a huge liability. Um, I'm going to pause this here because I see it's something else going on that I don't like. Um, it becomes a huge liability uh, with your villagers spread out this far. Like, now that you're aging, like, you've just sunk 2,200 resources into not training units. And so if he has, even if he's behind and he sunk 2,200 resources into making units, he could presumably have, like, a fairly even military count and push out. And if your villagers aren't safe, uh, you know, behind your TC, underneath your TC, at least off to a really awkward angle, like, look at where your villagers are gathering from, like closer to his base than your base, which is a, a huge deal uh, in terms of keeping your villagers safe. Like, even if they were back here, at least they would be, like, super out of the way, right? Like, this sprint distance is way longer than this distance, but you're, like, out here, like, gathering right next to his base, so this is, like, pretty risky in itself, and uh, that's kind of an issue. But the next thing I see that I noticed almost immediately after clicking up, and I just saw this because of how slowly this age up was starting to take. Like when this is uh, when this is a fast age, the fast aging po politician, uh, this thing like ticks by in like no time. It takes forty seconds for this thing to go. And I noticed immediately that when it, you started aging, it was like progressing so slowly, and that showed to me immediately that you're aging with a slow aging politician. And this is this is a huge issue because. Uh, so two things. One, you're likely going to have another shipment. I mean, we can see where the trade travois is here. You're about halfway to another shipment. Uh, the time that it takes that trade travois to like traverse here, I guess is a little longer than it would take to age, but you'll probably have about another shipment by the time uh, you would get aged up with the fast aging politician, which would allow you to send five dragoons, eight skirms, two falconets, something that's gonna help you immediately win the game. Um, but by aging up slowly, if he's got any army at all, which he does, and he's even just shipped six muskets by the looks of it, um, he's likely going to be able to put on some sort of timing pressure here. And even if he's pretty far behind, which it looks like he kind of is, yeah, he's only got 36 vil, so he doesn't have a super high vil count, uh, which is kind of like just due to the fact that the map's not very good for him. Um, it's not great for you either, but more he, his sieve is more reliant on the map. But... Given the fact that you're aging up slowly uh, and your military sizes are fairly even, maybe slightly in his favor now that he's shipped a military shipment, and your villagers are this far forward, there's a chance that you could just, like, maybe die to, like, him pushing out when you age up slowly. If you aged up fast and started training Dragoons and Skirms and getting a two Falconet shipment, never would be a worry, but... Uh, there is a slight chance that you could lose because you're aging up with the marksman. I think you're far enough ahead now here, just uh, in general, that I don't think that should happen. Um, but still a chance. He's a Sar, still, for like the 20th time, this uh, game should not be standing here. Uh, he's clearly gathering <laughs> resources over here. Uh, okay. Uh, you're aging up very slowly. I do like that at least you're like taking a proactive approach to like denying his next hunt so that like if there was a villager coming over here you would see it and you would be able to kill it. I get that that's your like your focus your game plan but at the same time like you've spent so much like you can accomplish that with a single hussar and the rest of your hussar could be over here like denying him resources or something like maybe he's even like yeah like you could at least be forcing him to bell these villagers in the outpost. And he does have a kind of scary army, like, because you're aging so slowly, like, you're putting yourself in a position where you could, like, lose your army in a heartbeat here and find yourself in a scary spot. So uh, he's pushing out uh, at a fairly opportune time, and he, you're still aging up really, really slowly, like, and it's taking a long time. Now, I still think you're okay. You, you should at the very least be training muskets here in transition, like, making some, like, you see him moving out across the map, 
it, here, you, I mean, you've got your shipment, right? Uh, that's all fine and good. Did the trade card just go by or? No, you just, oh yeah, the trade card's already gone by. So like, look at where you're at. You're like 60% of the way aged up. Definitely would have had a shipment. You could have two Felks on the way right now. And this, this situation, this crisis would be completely averted. But because you're aging with the marksman and because you uh, aren't able to spend this home city shipment in an effective manner, now all of a sudden this push is actually scary and you run a risk of losing even though you're like in a superior position. This is coming back to bite you the positioning once again of these like you're potentially going to lose houses and barracks and stuff that you don't want to be losing to timing pressure but at the same time it might buy you enough time to <laughs> here you hit like an oh shit moment and you're like oh crap we have to drain something here because he's got a lot of stuff going our way wouldn't be the case if you were just uh, already in the third age. You'd be tr training Dragoons and Falconets, which would just pub stomp his army right now. I think that's still what's going to happen. Like you're gonna you're gonna have bought enough time. It looks like to still get out like two Falconets and maybe upgrade your muskets or something like that. Veteran Hussar, two Falconets. Okay, like two Falconets should like probably just win you the game. <laughs> Vet Hus, I don't mind the Vet Hus decision here. This is, Barracks is a pretty big liability. A couple must get caught out there. You're doing an okay job of just like buying yourself time, waiting for the, you should have Vet Musk already queued. Okay, there it comes. Like that you're getting your upgrades. That's certainly an important part. He's wasting a bit of time over here. Uh, I saw a secondary point that you made was like, what can Brit do? Uh, I haven't been watching from the Brit's point of view, but like this was a huge, Huge waste of time going over here like Brit saw that you just aged up uh, and he should know that like the clock is ticking like he needs to do some sort of damage to you like right away and uh, he came over here like siege the racks and then bounced over here siege the TP like he needs to be finding your eco and standing on top of it but before the two falconets come once you get aged up and once the two falconets come just because of the course of the actions of the rest of the game he's like probably lost i mean he, he can't really recover at this point like brits brits is, has lost at this point but maybe if you would have taken his army advantage and found your army and sought out a fight before you got it super upgraded and stuff maybe he would have had a chance so there is that but like from this point like your army is just way better than his plus you have two falcons so like you'll just smash this fight it won't even be close like it doesn't matter you don't even need to micro here like you can just like smash your hussar in there just trap him uh Two falconets are closing in. Yeah, just everything can just fight. It doesn't matter. He's, he've also just randomly got like super strong Hussar because you did send that card. So uh, I guess that's that's okay. Yeah, uh, bit of extra resources here. Definitely should be training stuff. Try and keep the those resource counts as low as possible. Any uh, units is better than no units, especially when you're in a situation like this. Uh, where, you know, he's pushing out with what, I mean, it doesn't seem so scary now, right, but you're fighting with that Hus, that Musk, and a two Felk ship, and of course it doesn't seem scary anymore, but at the time it was scary you know, when he was pushing out across the map. And, yeah, I mean, they're just going to clean him up from here. He doesn't have anywhere to gather resources. Maybe he's finally down here. No, yeah, he's moving his villagers down here to this position that you've been trying to deny so so uh, importantly the entire game. He's still going to get down there at the end of the day. Uh, your resources are floating a little high. You also haven't been training CDB, I'm pretty sure, like very consistently throughout this. I've noticed there's your, your CDB count's not very high for 16 minutes of the game. Okay, and that's the end of the game. Let me just quick verify that. I just want to quick pop over here and see your villager count. Uh, it's actually not as bad as I was thinking it would be. You can see, like, there are times here where it flatlines, uh, it gets a little long. Uh, like, this is, this is the normal, this is the normal, oh, you even flatlined a little bit here. Uh, this is probably about the normal length that you can see, yeah, even here, like, so you can see, like, these are slightly longer, like, these two here are slightly longer than this one in terms of just, like, villager count, so I, I can tell that you idled for a couple of seconds each time here, so, uh, here, obviously, it was a little bit longer as well. Here at the end, like, I mean, this is because you're aging. Well, no, that's not true. This is because you're aging. And then here, you just, like, didn't queue up villagers uh, very consistently at all, but the game was kind of over, so uh, 
do make villagers obviously important. Uh, but to wrap up this game, uh, the very important things, the, the key issues that you that I've learned from this game about your gameplay. One, uh, heard, and, and I'll say this for basically every game, pretty much unless a player does it fairly well, um, that setting up your early game is one of the most important things for success. If you can set up your early game for a successful early game uh, and have your resource gather rates uh, be very efficient early on in the game, you're going to set yourself up for like much more clean builds and you're just going to gain so many more advantages. You can gain 10 PR overnight by just controlling the first 10 minutes of your game very efficiently, even more than that, like the first six minutes of your game. If you can execute the first six minutes of your game like flawlessly with consistency, you'll you'll gain so many ranks uh, just immediately. Like you'll you'll be surprised because you'll just always have more units than your opponent. Like if you ever look at like a really good French player like Sam play, and it's just like he's got way more units way earlier than I can have, and it's like. I, like I, and I don't know why. It's because they've got their resources right underneath their town center. Their villagers aren't messing around walking, um, and they've got a very clear, concise idea of what they want to do with their resources in the first six minutes of the game. And and that just wasn't true here. Your herding wasn't great. Your villagers spent a little bit of time bouncing around. wasn't that big of a deal, and, and you didn't get like your your steel traps early, and you just didn't have that much of an idea so watch re the, be the best way to fix that is watch streams watch replays um, enough said about that but then maybe the more critical aspect here was the the following two things it was one when you did apply pressure it wasn't really in a very consistent uh, manner you, you kind of stood your hussar down here way too much they didn't really accomplish that much uh, it was fairly clear that he was gathering hunt over here for the majority of the game uh, you had a military advantage I would Yes, for the majority of the game. I mean, if we take a look at the military unit population, like, you're way ahead in terms of military population for the first 10 minutes of the game. Like, until you basically pull the trigger and decide to age, you're way out ahead of him in terms of military population. Like, he didn't train any military until seven and a half minutes. You could have easily used that to leverage an advantage over here on the left-hand side of his base. And the game, like, this game could have ended at eight minutes because you could have just, like, sieged down his outpost and denied him any chance of ever hunting um, and just won the game outright right there. Um, so being more consistent with your pressure, uh, knowing where to pressure and how to pressure, um, and just thinking ahead, like, thinking, like, where is my opponent gathering and how am I going to stop him from gathering? Because if he can't gather resources, especially with a civ like Brit, who's very, very hunt-dependent, He's never going to be able to uh, transition into that big power spike around 10 minutes. So uh, you could have denied that very easily over here. So try and have a little bit more foresight into where and how you're applying pressure. And then finally, uh, be very, very careful with aging up with anything but the fast aging politician. There are times when it is arguably okay to age up with the non-fast aging politician. And I know those six skirms are so juicy and they're so, it's so nice to have. But that extra time that you gain uh, from aging up fast is invaluable. Uh, having the ability to send two Falconets or five Dragoons or three Corsairs uh, is so much more valuable than those six skirmishers that you're going to get from aging up. So if you ever have a shipment available, I think it's arguably uh, just not right to, to delay that by aging up with anything but the fast age politician. So uh, the fact that you did it in this game and got away with it, uh, just shows how far ahead you were, I guess, at this point already. But it could have cost you the game, and uh, had you played against a, a player who was a little bit better or in a little bit more even of a position, could easily have cost you the game to a timing push, uh, just due to the fact that your villagers were gathering in kind of awkward locations and, uh, and stuff like that. So uh, be very careful with uh, choosing your age up. I would say in general, if you're ever in doubt... If you have a shipment even like close to coming, like assuming you haven't just sent eight crossbows or something like that to like survive against a timing push, uh, like age up with the fast age up politician. B, there should be a very concrete re reason why you're not aging up with the fast age politician. And there was no reason not to age with the fast age politician here. So 
Uh, those two gameplay decisions, I think, were are the best things that you can do to improve your gameplay. Uh, so uh, those are the three things. Uh, the early game, the applying pressure in the correct spots, not standing your cav around, be active with your military units, and then choosing the right age of politicians. Uh, the best things I think you can improve. Hopefully that helped you out. That's going to do it for this uh, version uh, or this iteration of SmackDown and this uh, replay. Hopefully uh, you gained something uh got some knowledge from that and uh, uh, if anyone else wants to drop their replay uh, I will continue to work through these after Smackdown um, drop them in that drop them in that uh, in that link and I'll be happy to look at uh, a replay each week so thanks for tuning in guys as always uh, I'll look at another one next week and uh, until then take care guys uh, we'll see you next week for Smackdown